In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solo Tunes of a Mascot at a very basic level. A lot of the information here can be translated to both higher and lower invocation rates, along with the gear that I'm showing you as well. If you cannot afford what I'm showing here, you can downgrade or upgrade to the next best available item. If you have any further questions or would like some advice or help with rating, you can comment down below in the comment section or come by to the live streams that I do here on YouTube. I'm probably live right now while you're watching this video. If this guide helps you, feel free to like and subscribe as well while you're down there. Moving on to the first part of the guide, your gear. This is my magic setup. Obviously you can downgrade to like Tridents, Arons, Mystics, whatever you can afford. It's no big deal, but Light Bearer in my opinion is an amazing ring for this raid. Mole Slip is the best in slot as always. Over in the inventory, we have the Bofa setup. I decided not to bring the Tebow for this run, but you can use uh, and even a rune crossbow with ruby bolts if you need to that's not a problem that does a surprisingly decent job in this raid And in the melee section you have basically a fang if you don't have a fang you can use a hasta dragon hunter lance dragon sword Any sort of stab weapon even the blade of Saldor on stab is really good in this raid Especially at lower invocation raids dragon dagger is a pretty effective spec weapon for the core yellow keras If you don't have one just bring more brews and less prey pots that you're gonna see me bring I'm bringing dragon claws because it's just a fun spec weapon I like to use I would normally use the void waker but another group member is using it at the moment i don't recommend a bgs below like 350 invocation rate it's not really necessary especially if you have a fang if you don't have a fang then yeah a bgs might be effective but dragon war hammer is useless in this raid now for invocations i'm running at 170 i was going to do 150 but just for my own comfort i'm doing 170 you can make adjustments to whatever you're comfortable with and if you're unsure, you can always enter and practice invocations. I recommend softcore run while learning. That way, if you die, you can just leave the raid through the door rather than wiping. That way, it doesn't cost you 500k to get your gear back or 250k if you're an Iron Man. I highly recommend on a diet, provided you have access to Sarah Brews, because that way you don't need hard food and it's completely useless. It's free points. Deadly Prayers is also really effective. Lively Larvae and Blowing Mud are really easy, free invocations. Not Just Ahead is also really good. Gotta have faith and shaking things up make Bubba much easier. As for Akka, I have feeling special on purely for comfort. That's why it's 170 rather than 150. I like the faster uh, special attacks there. So if you want to practice feeling special, I highly recommend you learn this invocation. Feel free to just turn it on on a 20 invocation raid run in and practice the timing. If you're having trouble in Wardens or if you're not super fast with your switching and prey flicking, Turn off penetration because that will stop your prayers from being smited if you get hit by special attacks. Other than that, I recommend turning on all Warden invocations while you're learning other than insanity. That way you can get used to the timing. It's still a pretty comfortable speed and it is very forgiving. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to pre-pot and fill my inventory with prey potions and one super combat because... When you have the yellow Karis, all you're doing is using your prey points to heal you rather than bruise. So if you don't have yellow Karis, just run bruise and restores instead. And we're going to be starting off this raid with Zebak. Normally people go with Bubba. I'm not a big fan of time invocations because especially if you're in a group, once people start dying when you're learning, you're just wiping the entire invocation and you just lose points. And Bubba gives more points than any other room. So you want to do that one as close to last as possible if you're looking for purples. But start off with Zebak. I'm going to take my time and explain what's going on in this room. So if the crocodiles spawn, just uh, we'll deal with them when we get to it. What you're going to do is pick up a water container and stand either on this tile or this tile. It doesn't really matter. You just want to avoid the green balls. As the green balls are there, wait for the spikes to start going back in. Step forward one and run. You can also step back one if you want to. But this will pretty much skip over all damage. Pick up your water, stand on this tile. When the spikes go back in, run again. It shouldn't hit me here because you're kind of running over where the damage is applied. Put the water inside the tree. Also, you want to bring ancient magic. Sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, you can bring thralls and people say thralls are actually better DPS. Anyone that tells you that thralls are better DPS, you shouldn't bring ancient magic. They need a red hot needle stuck up their dick hole. doesn't matter. Same thing with the bottom one down here. You might get hit by that. That's fine. As long as you don't get hit um, when you've got the jug full of water, you will be totally fine. So taking damage here, just ignore it. It's fine. You'll get used to the timing and skip it. I'm just trying to be quick so I avoid the crocodile. Sorry if I'm going too fast. Once you put two jugs of water in the middle palm, the room is done. Pick up your potion, put on your melee gear, get ready for Zebak. Now you don't want to get chomped here. He's a big boy. He's got a big mouth. What you're going to do is quick enter and run at him pretty much straight away. Red balls are mage, rocks are range. That's all you need to know. Piety, run away. Don't stand in front of him. Wait for him to attack. Piety, Come back. That's a mage attack. Wait for him to attack. And you're good to go. I probably should have dragon clawed this, but it doesn't matter really. That's fine. Fang spec is amazing. Drop a potion. Put on your range gear. Start ranging him. That's it. That's all you're going to do. This is the fight for, well, the majority of it. Now, the invocation I have turned on is where he can use blood magic. So you will see little red, like, 
spikes coming out of his hand or like bloodburst streams coming out of his hands. That just means to pray mage so he doesn't heal off of you and your teammates. What he's going to do here is throw out poison jugs and waves. Just like doing Galvac, stand in the wave gap and you should be fine. I'm not even praying correctly. If you want to, you can hit the jugs to make them explode with water like this. Right click hit, but it, okay, don't worry, it didn't do anything. It's not really useful. Completely pointless. Just keep flicking your prayers. The damage is applied when the object physically hits you. Now you've got these boulders. All you're gonna do with these boulders is push a jug into a boulder or near a boulder. You can attack the boulder while it's uh, rolling and blow it up, and then you're gonna stand behind the boulder. That's it. After like three or four special attacks, Olme is gonna scream and do a lot of floor damage. So but if you're behind a boulder, you'll be fine. You won't take any damage. Like so. Look at that, big boy. So he's gonna do the wave mechanic and the boulder mechanic twice. That's pretty much it for the fight, so there's nothing else to explain. Prayer pot when you're low on prayer. Good luck. What the f- Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes his blood magic attack summons a big boy. <laughs> he's a big boy. Just run away from it and it will die. So when he's on his last 25% health or some shit, he speeds up his attack speed and stops to inspect. So we actually skipped a, a boulder spec then, which is uh, convenient. Yeah, well that's what you get for taking a bow to a low invocation raid. Now he's dead. Put on the melee gear. Time to move on. Pretty easy room. Next up, we're doing Kefri. The reason we do Akka and Baba last, like I said before, is Baba is double points while every other room is single and Zebak is 1.5. And Akka is like, you want salts in there because you're doing a lot of mage damage and you don't want to run out of run energy. So it's best to just wait until you have salts for Akka. All you have to do in this room is I recommend downloading the plugin called, it's like called Tombs of a Mascot or something. Hold on. Yeah, Tombs of a Mascot. And this pretty much solves the puzzles for you. While that might be cheese, no one really enjoys doing puzzles because uh, they're boring and uh, they're a stupid mechanic to this raid. So get the Tombs of a Mascot plugin. Walk through here. You only have to do like one of each side, basically. You don't have to do all five puzzles. So you just go here. You know what to click on because it numbers it for you because thank you to the plugin. Jagex allows it. And then just skip under here. You don't have to do this room or this room. Hop over the platform and then you can enter into here. All you're going to do is highlight these five tiles and then do the same on the other side. And it's just a matching game. It's important to note when you use these teleport crystals, it will restore your run energy. So you don't need to worry about being on low run here. It won't restore your prayer or health though. What we're going to do in this room, I'll give a quick rundown. There are two tiles I'm going to mark over here. When it's poo poo time, you got tile number one and tile number two. And what you're typically going to do is when it's time to stack poo poo, you're going to stand on tile one, and then when it's time to do it again, you stand on tile two, and this will block the melee inside. I'm going to do something slightly different with my poo, poo stack here for the more end game, higher invocation raiders that might be watching this. Something I figured out myself recently, which is pretty nice, but otherwise you stack up poo in tile one, then tile two. If you're in a team raid, you'll just stack up one and two at the same time. So that's pretty much it for now. Entering the room. Uh, you don't need to pray anything if you just keep moving. We're going to stab Kefri like this, maybe uh, sip our super combat, and just move. It's basically like Vorkarf, except a lot slower and more annoying. Just move out of the way, and you never get hit. It is magic damage, so Protect Mage will reduce the damage, but it doesn't really matter. See how I've uh, got bugs around me? It's poo-poo time. I'm going to stack up a piece of poo here. Normally you do tile number one, but I'm doing it in the middle. What this does that I figured out was it reduces, it, it blocks a swarm spawn that heals Kefri. So... Especially if you're doing high invocation raids, 450s, 500s, or medic, it'll actually cut off one of Kefri's healing cycles completely and give you a gap for more damage and heal, uh, heal less, which is pretty handy. Now, what I'm going to do is when you are... We're going to kill these uh, eggs first. When the eggs come out, I like to kill the big eggs. Don't worry about the little eggs. Just one hit the big eggs. It's 35 damage guaranteed kill. You're guaranteed to max hit it. What that does is it stops little guys from spawning. Now, I'm going to pop Kefri and pray range because now this guy's going to spawn by himself. And you just kill him and avoid the kamikaze bombers. And in the meantime, a lot of these swarms are going to stack up and uh, heal Kefri. Now, this is where if you had a blowpipe, you could take them out. I don't bring a blowpipe, which is probably something I should have mentioned at the start because I believe if you have a bofa, you don't need a blowpipe in this raid, especially on low invocation raids. So you can just kill these if you want to, but I mean, it's more points if you let Kefri heal up and it gives me more time to explain what's going on here. So I'm going to let uh, them all go in and heal on Kefri. I know for a fact that... She's done the egg special, so the next special is a poo poo special. So I'm going to throw on the dragon claws and just dump claws real quick. And the next time there's a special, you'll see the bugs around me. There'll be a slight noise cue like that. I'm going to stand here and stack up the poo poo. So what's going to happen next time the health drops is you're going to have a mage scarab here and a melee scarab on the middle poo poo. And he's going to run all the way around to attack me uh, because I'm not going to stack up poo poo again, I don't think, this time around because it's an easy invocation raid. Keep stabbing Kefri away. We're going to get eggs in a minute, so we'll make sure we take out the eggs. I think I was way too slow on one of those eggs, so I'm actually... Oh, my damage is not high enough. Hold on, I'm a dickhead. Let me take out these bugs. If these bugs end up spawning, pray range. I just like to not have them up at all, because 
I think it's an annoying waste of prayer, and you get a couple extra cheeky points, which we're all here for the purple at the end of the day, aren't we? So stand here, stack the poopoo up there, that's totally fine. Just, you know, don't lock yourself in a small quadrant like that, and you'll be okay. And right here, I don't really need to pray again unless the melee makes it round to me. I just pray melee. But really, you're gonna take out the major first, because if the major gives a full ring of red, uh, like bugs, you're fucked. Pray melee, because you're running past the melee now. Damn, these guys die so easy in this raid. You forget how easy uh, low invocation raids like this are. And the melee is dead. We're just going to let uh, let the swarms heal up again. What's going to happen now is we're going to kill Kefri Shield one more time, then that's it. Right, the swarms are back in, that phase is over. Now just drop Kefri Shield again. Poo poo, stack up here in the corner, just keep it nice and clean, which is ironic. Okay, once the shield drops, she'll uh, automatically hit you with poo poo, and now it's health instead. So this is where her defense technically resets if you did BGS spec. But we're just going to get the claws out and hit it with a fucking spec. And finish her off with the fang. That's it. Easy room. Just keep moving, watch your step, stack the poo poo. You can't go wrong. Next. You want to go to the helpful spirit, and nine times out of ten, you're going to want to just pick power so you have adrenaline and smelling salts. Although that is a pretty juicy chaos. If you're running low on supplies, and there's two salts, that is huge. But otherwise, power, two salts, that's the dream. Choose that, and we're going to now do Akka Room, because like I said earlier, um, Baba is worth more points. Right, this room is very simple. Get your pickaxe. There is a bronze one in these statues if you didn't have one stacked up before. And you basically just want to trace the light from this statue to this statue, which is uh, pretty simple. You just use mirrors to deflect it around. If you can't figure it out, well, you gotta learn today. And I've got a pro tip for you. What you're gonna do before I put the mirror down is you see when you've got the turns of a mascot plug-in, there's a green light or this blue light that will turn green. When it turns green is when you will click the head seal. If you click it when it turns green, your guy will actually walk in and get an extra swing on the seal in the middle and you should be able to down it in one hit, especially if you have uh, the correct mining level and pickaxe, which I think 85 and dragon or crystal pickaxe is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is go here, click it as it goes green, and we get the extra hit in because your animation kind of starts at the correct time. But I think with my mining level, I'm going to one down it regardless of gender. Look at that, perfect. As it comes up, it dies. Tick, perfect. Okay, I will not be doing butterfly in this room because I don't want to confuse people who are trying to learn. Uh, but that's like the tile setup that you have for butterfly. I don't really need them for the rest of the room. I just have it to show people what's going on. All you're going to do in here is start off on mage, you're going to salt, and what's going to happen is he does the same rotation every time, which is what you attack him with is mage, melee, range. Mage, melee, range. And it's in that cycle regardless, all the time. And he attacks with melee, range, mage. So the best way to remember it, in my opinion, is look at your prayer book. While you're maging, you pray melee. Okay, they're in line with each other. For the other two attacks though, they cross. Okay, I'll try to draw on the screen if I can be bothered, but basically, mage and melee are always in line with each other, while the other two are crossed with each other. So if you have to start praying range, you know that you've got to use melee, because that's piety. I hope that makes sense, that's the best way I try to remember, it's the same with like vanguards and cogs. Basically, you're going to go in here, start praying melee and mage, and for this phase, you can actually just run away from him. Just keep running away and damaging him with mage until the shadows show up. Alright, the shadows have shown up, you want to put on your range gear, ideally. And just kill any shadow, whichever one's closest to you, it doesn't really matter. I normally just end up doing the black one anyway, but kill the shadow with range. Uh, blowpipe or both, it seems to be the most effective way. The fang's really good as well. Once you kill the shadow, Akka now has to remain in this quadrant. See how he's changed his prayer? Okay, he's going to the middle here. So this is Simon Says. It's going to be four colors, and they're going to be quick. So you just want to copy the colors and move with it. It's really hard to explain as it's going, but try to keep up with me. I've got the invocation on that makes the colors go faster. And I like to have it like that. It's way more comfortable, but... If you don't have the feeling special invocation on, it will be a lot slower and you can take your time with it. I recommend learning it the fast way though, but notice how he's now ranging, so I melee. It's diagonal, uh, like it's crossed from each other. Now you come over here, I'm just gonna keep maging this shadow. Basically, you wanna kill the shadow and keep Arca in the quadrant of that shadow until the shadows pop up again. Okay, he's gone to mage, and now I'm gonna range instead, or pray range when I start attacking him. But also, see how I've turned black? That's another special of his. What that means is I shouldn't move. If I move, I'm gonna make a, like, summon some balls. If you step on those balls, you take damage, you die. That's the best way to remember it. So basically, if you're black, freeze. If you're in a team, you can also turn white, you're free to go. Black, freeze, white, you're free to go. Remember that, shout out to America. The shadows have spawned again. He's gone to do Simon Says. We're gonna go to black, red, white, yellow. And as you hear the noise trigger, just click. That's the best way to get this timing. Just click as you see and hear the animation trigger. He's gone back to melee, which means I have to mage because they're in line with each other in the prayer book. I'm sure you're keeping up with me. This is really simple stuff, guys. Put on the mage gear, start hitting him. Now, you do take a lot of damage from his melee through prayer, which is why people recommend butterflying, but I'm not going to teach butterflying or show it in this video because it's just, 
It's too much for people to learn. I'm just, I don't really want to deal with the comments down below like, this is a really sweaty guy and it's not good for noobs at all. I don't really care. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for the simple-minded folk out there. Come down here to the last quadrant and just keep praying. When he changes his attack style, he's also going to do a special, I believe, unless Stay Vigilant is on. So let's keep on chipping away at his health. Last shadow is down. This, this invocation is like super easy. It's kind of ridiculous. We've got another Simon Says. This is good practice. Black, red, black, yellow. Just move across. As you hear the spec go, you just click. And that's it. Now it's time for the come phase. When he dies, put on your Melee Gear and uh, pray Mage and Piety. And Mage, all that does is reduces the damage of specific balls that are basically spawned for you. There's balls that'll uh, spawn the same every time, no matter the rate. And then there are balls that will spawn based on your location. The ones that spawn based on your location are the ones that will... Uh, do reduce damage if you protect mage. So that's the best thing to do in my opinion. Otherwise, you're going to take 25 regardless. Run through, kill the Akka, and you're good. Again, this is a low-level invocation, so I am blitzing through it without really trying, uh, which probably doesn't help, but I guess it also just shows um, how easy the raid can be for you when you get a fang, essentially. Now it's time for Baba, the most infuriating and annoying puzzle room in the game. What you want to do is grab potions, Grab hammers. You got pillars, you got vents. When you're a solo, that's all you need to know. When there's skulls on the pillars, you repair one pillar. When there's skulls on the vents, you use potions over one vent. That's about it. Waves are the same rotation every time, so you can learn it eventually. So you see how uh, the pillar's got a skull? Hit that with the hammer real quick. This guy's a mage, so you want to range him, and then you want to melee the rangers, and it's that simple. The bofa seems to just hit anything anyway because uh, balanced weapon. Go over here, the shamans. You want to kill the shamans as soon as possible. Shamans summon thrails. You don't want thrails because they just are annoying little shits. What you can do as well, since you've got blood magic, is burst or barrage them. Look at that, free heals. Good for noobs. Back to pillars again, free construction XP. Thank you, Jagex. Volatile baboons, baboons I like to call them. Stay away from them. They'll walk up to you and then blow up on the spot. So uh, basically just run away when they get close to you and you'll be fine. Uh, cursed baboons, leave venom on the floor. Kill them, you're good. You can freeze them, but just... Just kill them, don't step in the venom, you'll be fine. For those who don't understand how movement works, when you're running, you move two tiles at a time, so you can step over venom and not get hit by it, provided you have run enabled, which is uh, pretty effective for when you're trying to path around these boys. Okay, that was pretty quick. Uh, pick up the potions, moving into Baba. Arguably, well, no, certified, the shittest boss in the raid. Main reason being is because he just fucking smacks you for no good reason through prayer. Doesn't matter the invocation level, he can hit you for like 24s through prayer, so just keep that in mind when you're in this room. Now, I don't have mine the gap on, but if you do, you don't want to get knocked into this pit, otherwise you will die. But what's going to happen is you're going to damage him, one third damage, then he's going to throw boulders. You're going to kill the boulders with range, and then when the boulder phases over, you're going to damage him again, he's going to throw boulders, and so on. You'll see what I'm talking about when we're in here. So we're going to have another piece of salt, real quick, and we're going to go on with melee. Pray melee and party. I'm not going to dump claws, but I am anyway, because meme, why not? And, oh, wow, we actually hit. Let's go. We'll do it again. Good luck. Look at that. Okay, pretty happy with that. So, boulders are going to fall from the sky. Go stand next to one. Doesn't matter. Now, the invocation I have turned on, I can't remember what it's called now, but the big ground slam one makes the slam that he does a lot bigger, but it also makes it slower. So you have more time to react, which is why it's good. And we've read it on one third damage. Okay, so what he's done is he's thrown me to the back here, put on your range gear, hit the boulder with range that is black, not the gray ones. That's all you got to do. You can skip, you can use a blowpipe because it's like a tick faster than the animation. It doesn't really matter as long as you one hit the boulder. Or as long as you do hit the correct boulder with range, you'll always hit it with your max hit. And just wait for Bubba to come back down here. I'm just keeping it simple. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not trying to boulder skip. I'm not trying to hit him between boulders. We're just taking our time. Put on your melee gear, protect melee, and start stabbing him again, sticking with the pointy end. Little baboons, they're pretty handy to kill. I don't mind. I don't think I have the invocation on the makes and drop bananas. I could be wrong, but if they do, run away from that. Um, don't stand on the bananas, but yeah, kill the baboons because it's three points, why not? You get double points in this room, so absolutely get a hold of that while you can. And then take out Baba. Oh, I don't know if it showed earlier in the fight, I can't remember, but see how he threw a boulder at me? You just want to stand next to Ivor Rock or the sarcophagus when he throws the boulders. That way you don't take a metric shit ton of damage. Time for boulders again. You only got to do it twice, and then it's home run from here. For those who are curious what a boulder skip is, basically you just kill the boulder and just run. That's it. Then you melee him, and he cuts the face short, which is like, it speeds up the raid, and it's all <laughs> extra DPS. But it doesn't really matter if you do it or not. Like, you're just going to get yourself killed if you don't know what you're doing. Easy game. Baba is down. Time for Wardens. Time for your second spirit before Wardens. Um, if you went power, you've still got one salt, or two doses of salt, you still got the adrenaline. Go life. The Ambrosias are huge, but the Chaos is nice there too if you do need an extra salt and Ambrosia. 
that's good. But life, like I have way too many supplies for this raid, ridiculously. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna do my best to explain how this works as I do it. But I highly recommend you always do a three down in P2 Wardens because it's free points. There's no need to do a two down unless you're speed running. Um, that, that, it, it just doesn't make sense. You can blitz through this boss, especially on these invocations. Do a three down. Get the extra points. What have you got to lose? Absolutely nothing. Unless you are absolutely fucked on supplies, you shouldn't really need to worry about that ever. But I'm going to just get my salt out and my adrenaline, and I'll probably just drop like two pots here so I have at least um, an ambrosia and a restore on me at all times. That should be pretty good. So what we're going to do here is, this is where you could BGS the obelisk, but again, 170 invocation, it's pretty pointless, especially with a fang. We're just going to have the salt, drink one liquid adrenaline, and then I'm going to start the raid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on the left side here, in front of this side, uh, in front of these balls, and I'm going to take a bit of damage. Just do this until, I do it until I'm about 60 health from 99. Uh, the adrenaline, sorry, I forgot to mention, the adrenaline halves the amount of special attack you need, which I forgot about until just now. So, spec away on the pillar. All the way. I'm going to stop until about now. You can't get going until you hear the first special attack. But the reason you stop on this side rather than that side is because what happens is, standing on this side of the obelisk, you fight this warden in P2, and then you fight this warden in P3. Don't stand under the lights, otherwise you die. This is where you could range. Both from Blowpipe do a good job here, but I don't really care. That's about it. This is the part of the raid where you take unnecessary, ridiculous amounts of damage because Jagex is like, oh, well, big damage means hard raid, but it's good content, right? So uh, thank you, Jagex, for, for doing that to us. Basically, just keep stabbing away and just eat. The salts will keep you uh, potted up. Every 15 seconds, it refreshes stats. And yellow, so I'm actually just going to swap to my range kit here and just finish it off. Now, I have a tile marked here. Mark this tile. Very good tile to use. In my opinion, the best tile in the game. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. So, while he's attacking me, that's a range attack. Mage attack is the red skull. So you got to do. Now, while you're on this tile, it's always mage damage, by the way, first up. On this tile, wait for these lines to pop up, these dots, for this spec, and then just stand here. Or stand here even if you want. It doesn't really matter. That's a mage attack. Turn on your mage prey. That's a smite mage attack. There's a lot going on here. I'm trying my best, alright? I'm sorry. Um, this is the safest tile in the room. Obelisk specials. You got the floor windmill. A lot of people here, they start panicking and running. Do that, your team dies. Just stand here. And then stand back. That's it. Warden goes down. Put on your DDS. Spec it. Keep specking the core. With melee. Don't use mage like my other guy. I'm trying to keep up here. I do apologize. There's a lot going on. I'm kind of just smashing through the warden. But basically, he's gonna do. We're gonna do three downs, which means we're gonna have three different attack phases. Mage. Now we range him, and then the next one will be range. Uh, mage again. Move out of the way of that attack. That'll just freeze you in stone. That's a range attack. That's also a range attack. Too easy. What's the obelisk gonna do this time? Skulls. So you can stand within two tiles of each skull, and not take any damage from it. Uh, basically, just go to the black squares, stand next to them, and you should be fine. Don't stand diagonal of them. Stand next to them, or run away from them. Those are your two choices. But you don't really want to move the warden into melee range of this square. Put on your melee gear again. Hit the spec. So what I am going to try to explain quickly, uh, bear with me, is with the supply scroll. I've got to mention earlier. I've got it set. So if you like, if you're using Runelight, you can like shift, right click with menu and just swap and go um, swap shift click. I've got shift click swap to resupply. All that's going to do is you see how my nectar is a uh, one dose in my inventory. If I shift click resupply, it just tops it up straight from the inside the supply case, so I don't actually have to open it. So I recommend doing that and having it set to shift resupply, so that way you can resupply when you need to. Stand on this tile, doesn't matter, he's dead now. Sorry for the uh, rough obelisk in Warden's face, it's just... <laughs> I've, I haven't done this raid in a hot minute, so it's been a, you know, I, I forget how much goes on in here and how quickly you can blitz through it. And you're pretty much just going to range the rest of the room now unless you have a shadow. Heidi goes off, Rigger goes on, hit him with the harder. All you're going to do is stand on the right side here and then move left too. And then one to the middle and that's it. Same rotation for the entire fight. Jagex has really mastered the arts of, um, you know, innovating fight mechanics here. So you're just going to do this the whole time. Once he gets to a certain threshold, he's going to summon skulls. Two options. You can skull skip. Don't do that unless you know what you're doing. I'm probably going to do it anyway for the meme, but what you're going to do is when the skulls come out in a second, if you have a bow or even a crossbow, you should be able to get one attack off each movement, so you don't really need to ruin your timing. Skulls come out, put on a melee weapon. The Keras is probably not the smartest one for this, but still. And just tag him. Wow, I did that poorly. Um, and yeah, that's it. Tag him once, they'll get one hit. Stand on the right side again and get ready for him to start his attackers again. The only time it's not start on the right side is when you do insanity. Uh, which isn't what this guide is for, so don't worry about that for now. And it doesn't matter the attack speed, it's all one tick attack, so you just like... Smack it like that. 
And it's kind of fun, to be honest. When the second set of skulls come up, Zebrak spawns on the left and starts attacking like normal, from before. The damage is applied when the projectile physically hits you, so you have plenty of time to switch your preys. Take your time. What I'm going to do next is a skull skip. You don't need to be doing this. This is just for extra points and extra meme. All that skull skipping does, the, the idea is that you just spam click the skulls with a ranged weapon, and the timing is so perfect that when you go from red clicking to yellow clicking, the skulls that your spam's clicking, you'll skip over the floor damage. The only problem I'm going to have is I don't know the timing for solos without uh, insanity. So, <laughs> hopefully I don't die. Best of luck. Because Bubba's going to be dropping balls on my head. We're just going to guess. Um, I'm going to guess like three boulders, maybe. Oh. Yep. Well, good thing I've got a shit ton of supplies. I don't have any salt. Good luck. I guess that's what really separates, you know, the men from the boys. Any other content creator would do the coward thing and cut that out and, you know, restart the entire raid or something, but I think that's fucking hilarious what just happened, so yeah, let me just bust back through to uh, where we were. <laughs> Give me a hot minute. So, uh, you may have just missed that, but um, that's another one of his smite attacks. So he has three different smite attacks. One is the red skimmy, one is the white arrow, and the other is the blue ball. And if you hear a noise and he throws it at you like that, the red arrow, he smites you and throws a range attack at you. You just pray range. Major if it's a blue ball, uh, melee if it's a red skimmy. That's it. That's all you have to do to avoid damage from that completely. I think we're actually out of bruise now too. We have three doses. That's it. Okay. Don't skull skip. Bubba's here though. So Bubba's just going to keep dropping boulders and you just keep moving. But the timing is like so simple that it's pretty much just an ignored mechanic instantly. You just keep moving with the floor. And it's almost like Bubba's never there. All right, last skull phase. There is four in total. Pretty mage, thank you. Get rid of these boys. And the next time we go to like pop the, a skull phase, it's going to be the lightning floor phase that you've probably seen around town. That without insanity on is really honestly just super easy. All you got to do is just not step where you previously stepped. I'll explain it when it starts. What you're going to do here is um, not step in the same place more than once, you know? Because otherwise the boulders will hit you on the head. That's it. Just keep moving. Even just like in a pattern like this, it's totally fine. We're actually running out of floor here without salt. God damn. We did it. It was easy. Um, that's it. He's dead. Pretty simple raid. Teleport crystal. Purple! Yeah, I expect no purple. That, that, there's no fucking shock there, let's be honest, guys. But do we get the pet? That's the question. Give me the pet! Fuck that! Ladies and gentlemen, is TOA hopefully better explained than my last guide and obviously better than any other guide on uh, YouTube because, well, no other creator does it right, no other creator does it better than me. So thank you very much for watching. Good luck on the purples. Again, if you need help, you want got any questions, you want some advice, ask in the comment sections down below or come to my live streams. I'm always happy to have a discussion. Thank you for watching. Look after yourselves. Have a good night.